For many, the 1990s was the golden age of gaming, but it was also quite a while ago, and that's why today GameRanks is bringing you 10 things only 90s gamers will understand. Number 10, Peppy telling you to do a barrel roll in Star Fox 64. Nintendo games are pretty intuitive as far as telling you how to play them, and typically they don't outright tell you. Star Fox on the Super Nintendo contain in-game dialogue telling you how to use the controls, and with the addition of voice acting in Star Fox 64, managed to figure out some way to be completely charming with, with the goofy tutorial dialogue. Add a couple of spots in the first level, Peppy tells you how to do some specific maneuvers. One of them for some reason sticks out like a sore thumb. He tells you to do a barrel roll, press Z or R twice, and for some reason it really sticks with you. Star Fox 64 was such a quirky but widespread accepted game, and little things like this were what really made it endearing. Number 9, feeling completely invincible when you had both Yoshi and a cape in Super Mario World. In Super Mario Brothers games, you basically have as many hits as you have power up. You also got an extra hit for riding Yoshi. When you had a cape, it meant that you had a magic mushroom, but you also had a cape, so you were already pretty safe right there. Add in the fact that you're riding Yoshi, and you're basically a walking Mario tank. Number 8, the Sega Saturn launch. Sega of America made some bizarre decisions that forced the Sega Saturn out before they'd really done a marketing campaign for it. It didn't have many launch titles, and it was essentially a disaster. Among certain people, you can just reference the Sega Saturn when something goes wrong, and everyone knows exactly how dire has gone wrong. Number 7. How difficult the minecart levels are in Donkey Kong Country. The original Donkey Kong Country. Not that the Retro Studios Donkey Kong Countries aren't difficult, but they aren't the original. Rare wanted to make a platformer that was very easy to pick up, but that required you to get good at it in order to proceed. That's why they made precision timing levels like the minecart levels. You had to either memorize these levels, or have incredible reflexes. Most people memorize the levels. It didn't hurt that the music in Donkey Kong Country, however, was one of the best video games Game soundtracks of all time. It was never irritating to replay levels. Number 6. Getting preoccupied with stretching Mario's face at the beginning of Super Mario 64. Now the opening screen had a little easter egg for people who, you know, spent more than 3 seconds on it. You could use the controller to manipulate Mario's face in a way that I'm not really sure why they came up with, but I am happy they did because it's a lot of fun. You can make Mario look so ridiculous that he's borderline unrecognizable. That hat gives it away no matter what though. I personally would sometimes boot up the game just to play with Mario's stupid face. Number 5. Throwing foot soldiers at the screen in Turtles in Time. Back in the Super Nintendo days, the graphics were good, but they weren't incredible, and things that were out of the ordinary always seemed that much cooler. In Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Turtles in Time, you could, after beating up a foot soldier, grab them and throw them towards the screen. I didn't encourage you to learn the controls for the game, because you could defeat enemies in a much cooler way. It's actually a great example of when graphics can be integrated into the game that encourages and rewards players and complements the overall game. Number 4. The Sega Does What Nintendo Don't Marketing Campaign Now Nintendo was obviously the big name in video games from the launch of NES until Sonic the Hedgehog came out on the Genesis. But Sonic wasn't the only thing that changed that. About the same time, Sega launched a marketing campaign that is etched into the heads of anyone who is serious about video games at that point. Sega didn't really tell you what Sega did that Nintendo didn't, but instead hit you over the head with a bunch of really cool footage from their video games that, that carried a more edgy tone, moved faster, and felt larger scale than Nintendo's games. As with most advertising, it was mostly about feeling rather than actual information, but it worked. Number 3. The first time you played Rayman, possibly on a demo unit in a store. When the Sony PlayStation launched, it had a lot of more realism-oriented games, or at least seemingly so. And at the time, a lot of what people wanted to play was actually actually mascot platformers. So when they were putting demo units in stores, they would often put the game Rayman by Ubisoft into the machine. And this would catch the eyeballs of people who liked Mario and Sonic, and they'd go and try it out. And Rayman was a kick-ass platformer. It had gorgeous graphics, ran smooth as silk, and had some of the best music you've heard in a game. And I mean that up until today. And really everything about Rayman holds up now, as evidenced by the fact that Ubisoft went back to the original style of play for all their recent Rayman games. Number two, the Final Fantasy VI opera scene. At one point in the game, there's actually a, an opera scene, and it's possibly one of the strangest things in any video game ever. Sully's, the character portrayed in the scene, does kind of sing, but it's really actually the internal instruments that the Super Nintendo had, while words are being printed on the screen that scroll by. It's not as if it's a bad scene, it's actually good, and the creators of the game really wanted to stretch what they were able to do, but if you tried to explain to somebody who plays video games now when there's voice acting, your fond memories of the Final Fantasy 
Fantasy VI opera scene, it might primarily be met with confusion. And number one, probably the thing that I think is most difficult for people to understand now is the Dreamcast. It was a powerful console for the time, but it was short-lived and it was a little desperate. Sega at the time was in serious trouble, and the Dreamcast was kind of an all-or-nothing, last-ditch attempt at staying in the console business. Now that being said, Sega came out swinging with some of the most innovative titles they'd ever made. They actually worked with Microsoft to create a platform that was extremely easy to develop for because it ran a special version of Microsoft Windows. This was actually Microsoft dipping its foot into the console waters. It's quite possible they knew that the Dreamcast wasn't going to last long because the Microsoft Xbox came out not long later. And it's actually because of the Dreamcast that Microsoft had some kind of presence in console gaming in the 1990s. Now to about 10,000 people, Dreamcast is possibly the best thing that ever happened. And there are people to this day that still wish Sega would go back into the console business and make a Dreamcast 2, which is extremely unlikely. And somebody who is not a 90s gamer is not likely to understand why. Now that's a lot of nostalgia right there, but I feel like I'm kind of forgetting some. Like shooting wildly at a crouching odd job in GoldenEye 007 multiplayer, how quickly you could go from first to last on Rainbow Road in Mario Kart 64 thanks to all the blue shells that were eventually flying around. The very first time you heard finish him. Finally catching a damn Mewtwo on Pokemon Red and Blue. Swinging Bowser around and throwing him in Super Mario 64. Running through a loop in Sonic the Hedgehog. The first time you see the Shinra building in Final Fantasy 7. Getting the Hadouken power up in Mega Man X and learning everything had just been a dream in Link's Awakening. 90s gaming really is just filled with moments and events that could have only happened then. If you remember this time in gaming, make sure to leave us a comment with your memorable moments. Also, don't forget to click like and subscribe if you haven't already, because that's the best way to get our daily videos first. We thank you so much for watching this video, and as always, we will see you next time on Game Ranks.